Photoshop goes multiplayer, Cavalry is making a splash, and Tendril drops yet another banger. It's Motion Mondays. Let's tear it up. Brands are thirsty for motion design like never before, but there is a catch. They want insane quality at breakneck speed. A new article from It's Nice That dives into how designers and brands are navigating this evolving landscape. The demand for high-end motion is exploding, but so are the expectations for flexibility and reusability. Clients want project files, multiple aspect ratios, and systems that they can adapt internally. And there's tension brewing. Motion design is fluid by nature, while branding demands consistency. This has created a need for experts who can bridge that gap. New tools like Cavalry and Rive are helping by letting artists create responsive animations that adapt to different formats. Check out the full article at It's Nice That for more insights on where our industry is heading. Remember Autograph, that 2D, 3D motion design app that launched a couple of years ago? Well, they've just dropped version 2025.1 with some features that might actually make you take notice. The headliner is Autograph Live Link, letting you create motion templates for DaVinci Resolve. Think Mogurts, but with a twist. Unlike After Effects templates that need to be baked before hitting Premiere, these stay editable in Autograph even while being used in Resolve. But here's the really interesting part. You can now import After Effects projects into Autograph. This means you could theoretically create something in After Effects, bring it into Autograph, make it a live link, and then use it in Resolve as a template. It's a pretty slick workflow if you're not a Premiere editor. The interface is cleaner now too, with better navigation and inspection tools. There's a free version if you want to kick the tires, and the paid version doesn't really break the bank. Competition in software is always good for us artists, so it's worth checking out. Have you ever tried doing serious character animation in After Effects? It's possible, but it's like trying to eat soup with a fork. Technically doable, but probably not the best approach. Enter Moho, a purpose-built character animation powerhouse that might blow your mind. I saw this post about the ultimate Super Mario Galaxy recaps, and they were all done in Moho, though you'd never guess they're rigged puppets because they look hand-drawn. The software's got some seriously clever features, smart bones for complex rigging, automatic mesh creation, liquid shapes, and a real-time playback engine with amazing performance. There's even a smart boil feature to make rigged characters look traditionally animated, plus seamless Photoshop integration and a 3D system. While I haven't personally used it, seeing that Mario animation and digging deeper makes me think that this could be a really great app for motion designers that are heavy into character work. It's definitely worth a look if you're tired of wrestling with After Effects for character animation. Here's some news from School of Motion. Our winter B session kicks off February 3rd with two of our most popular courses. If you've been itching to dive into motion design but aren't sure where to start, this is your moment. After Effects Kickstart, led by the incredible Noel Honig, takes you from noob to nasty in After Effects. You'll master the interface, learn essential animation techniques, and by the end, you'll be cranking out complete animated pieces with multiple shots. Meanwhile, Jake Bartlett's Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed teaches you the design fundamentals you need to create professional level artwork. No more fumbling around with the pen tools, you'll be crafting style frames and storyboards like a seasoned pro. Both courses come with our signature interactive approach, unlimited critique on your work from professional artists who have been in the trenches, access to our global community of motion designers, monthly live streams packed with industry insights, and tons of downloadable project files and assets. And there's more. Blender for 3D Artists launches the same day, featuring the ridiculously talented Elijah Sheffield as the instructor. This isn't your typical, here's where the buttons are course. We get into real world production techniques, especially helpful if you're making the jump from Cinema 4D. You'll tackle everything from basic modeling, lighting, texturing, and animation, and even touch on advanced features like geometry nodes and grease pencil. And if you happen to be near Portland, Oregon on February 27th, please come hang out. I'm speaking at AEPDX's event. It's going to be a blast. Early bird pricing runs through January 31st. There will be three hours of motion design chat, questionable puns, and hanging out with fellow pixel pushers. I cannot wait to see you there. Let's feast our eyes on some incredible work making waves in motion design. Cub Studio just dropped their 2025 reel, and as always, it's packed with stuff that you'll immediately want to steal. I mean, get inspired by. Their evolution from 2D specialists to 3D powerhouse has been amazing to watch, and everything they touch has that cub thing in it. It's often imitated, but never duplicated. Then there's Tendril's ESPN college football playoffs piece. I'm sorry, Notre Dame fans. The team absolutely crushed it with their signature blend of gorgeous 3D, slick MoGraph, and perfect compositions. The way they integrated type and showcase the various teams is pure design porn, and the write-up on their site is super insightful. But the real show stealer might be Ryan Corneal's real-time puppet work in Unreal Engine. This guy's creating what looks like a live Fraggle Rock using some kind of hand controller setup, and the results are brilliant. The hair dynamics and physics are so good, you'd think these were real puppets, and I think that this style lends itself perfectly to Unreal. Links to all of this eye candy will be in the description, so prepare to feel simultaneously inspired and completely inadequate. 
Have you seen what Fafa is doing with cavalry lately? This amazing Chinese motion designer just dropped a piece that looks deceptively complex, the kind of thing that would have you drowning in pre-comps and track mats and After Effects. But here's where it gets interesting. I downloaded the project file available for free from scenery.io, and the setup is brilliantly simple. The whole project is organized like a traditional edit, with shots laid out as separate compositions. And by the way, this is playing back in real time. I had to dig into one particular shot that caught my eye, this mesmerizing sequence of intersecting shapes with flowing gradients. In After Effects, this would be a nightmare of nested comps and effects, but in Cavalry, it's just four layers. The setup is genius. There's a single ellipse shape inside what's called a duplicator. Think Cinema 4D cloner, but for 2D. That duplicator is set to blend mode difference, which creates those intersections automatically. A stagger behavior with some carefully crafted easing curves gives everything that fluid motion. But the real magic comes from Cavalry's gradient shader system. It not only applies a conical gradient, something I actually didn't know existed, but also includes a built-in jitter property for that subtle noise that we all love. Fafa's masterful understanding of animation principles ties all of the shots together, and this piece is is sick. If you want to learn how it's done, you can head to scenery.io and grab the project file and start reverse engineering. And drop a comment if you'd like to see some cavalry training from School Motion. We're hearing more and more requests for it from our students. Dropbox just dropped a brand guidelines website that's making waves in the design world. This isn't your typical boring web page. It's packed with slick animations triggered by scrolling, clicking, and hovering. One standout feature is this clever icon slot machine that randomly cycles through options on hover. The secret sauce? Rive, of course. Dropbox's Brand Studio teamed up with Daybreak Studio using a combo of Webflow and Rive to pull off these smooth interactions. They've got a great breakdown on Rive's site explaining the tech stack and the workflow. This is exactly the kind of project more motion designers could be tackling. And when big names like Dropbox show off what's possible, you know other brands will follow suit. If you want to get in on the action, check out Rive Academy Volume 1 with Volume 2 Cooking in the Kitchen. Adobe is cooking up something pretty sweet in the Premiere Pro beta, media intelligence. This AI tool analyzes your footage and generates detailed descriptions of everything it sees, camera angles, subjects, lighting, and of course, transcribes dialogue. As someone who started as an assistant editor spending weeks logging footage, this is like having a tireless assistant who never needs coffee breaks. The best part? It all happens locally on your machine faster than real time. No cloud processing needed, which is huge for studios working with sensitive material. If you're cutting documentaries or wrangling mountains of B-roll, this could be a serious time saver. Grab the beta through the Creative Cloud app if you want to take it for a spin. Here's one for 3D nerds. Have you ever wrestled with massive VDB files? You know those volume database files storing your smoke, fire, and fluid sims? Well, Zebra VDB makes a tool that uses AI to compress VDBs down to 1 100th of their size, and they just dropped a free Unreal Engine plugin to play back those compressed VDBs. Our own, our own, Rabinowitz that is. He tested it out and he says that it works great. The compressed files retain all the quality, but it takes up way less space and runs smoother in real-time applications. If you're doing virtual production or just tired of your hard drive crying every time you save a smoke sim, check out Zebra VDB's tools. You have to pay to compress VDBs, but the free plugin in the Fab Store can play them back and there are some free ones to mess around with. The links will be in the description. Time to shine the spotlight on Carlos Larias, our student of the week. This Portuguese artist spent 11 years grinding in New York City before moving to Paris. Not a bad upgrade at all. And he's currently crushing it in advanced motion methods. His Museum Milano assignment shows off some seriously smart animation choices. The trailing lines create a perfect perfect sense of speed, and his eye trace game is on point. Advanced Motion Methods isn't exactly a walk in the park. It's taught by Sonder Van Dyke and known for its challenging projects. But if this is what Carlos brings to the table right out of the gate, we can't wait to see what he cooks up by the end of the course. Crea just launched a pretty slick feature that lets you turn AI-generated images into 3D objects for real-time perspective manipulation. I couldn't help myself, I had to give it a test drive. Like all AI tools, it's got its quirks, but this one feels different in a good way. Here's how it works. Crea has this real-time generation mode where you can rough in shapes with paint tools, give it a prompt, then dial in the AI strength until you get something close to what you want. I started with some abstract swooshy shapes for a background, and once you're happy with that, it becomes your canvas. Then I tried generating a DSLR camera, and yes, like all AI tools, the type came out looking like something from the fly. But when you find something that roughly works as a placeholder, you can convert it to a 3D object. The conversion process takes a couple of minutes, and sure, the 3D model ends up looking pretty janky, but here's the clever part. The model's quality matters less than you'd think, because Crea is using it as a reference input for further generations. You can resize and rotate your 3D object, then use it as part of your prompt for the next generation. There's even a quick enhance feature that can plus up your final composition, though you'll still probably want to clean things up in Photoshop. What makes Crea stand out 
is how it feels less like a slot machine, I'm looking at you, mid-journey, and more like working with a slightly confused and over-eager design assistant. The real-time feedback lets you actually art direct the process instead of just throwing prompts at a wall and hoping something sticks. While it's still hard to imagine using this for final production work, it's incredibly useful for concepting, mood boards, and quick style frames. You get some free credits each month to play with, and the paid version is pretty reasonable if you find yourself using it regularly. Check it out, let us know what you think in the comments. Adobe's bringing some Figma energy to Photoshop with their new co-editing beta. There's currently a waitlist to get access to the feature, but multiple artists can now work on the same file simultaneously, complete with color-coded cursors so you know who's doing what. YouTuber Julianne Coast shows off how it's pretty intuitive. Invite someone to your file and boom, you're collaborating in real time. This could be huge for training and team projects, though I'm curious how they'll handle conflicts when two artists try to edit the same element. This feature will eventually roll out to everyone and could be a huge help for collaborative design work, assuming they nail the technical details. And if you go to Adobe's site to learn more, you'll get to see a mock-up of the tool with one of the designer's names set as Guy Wang. Yes, Guy Wang. I know, I'm 12. And that wraps up another packed episode of Motion Mondays. Don't forget our Winter Bee Session and Blender course both drop February 3rd. And if you're near Portland in late February, come hang out at AEPDX. I've got a fresh batch of dad jokes ready to go and links to everything will be in the description. Subscribe to our channel, goddammit, and we'll catch you next week.